Suso, tira Alessio, Suso, tira, perché non tiriamo? Ma perché non tiriamo? Gol! Alessio Romagnoli, gol! Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Sempre Milan podcast. I'm your host, Ollie Fisher, joined once again by Anthony Talgrud. What's up guys, glad to be back. Um, I guess I didn't miss anything. I was on vacation, so I thought I was going to say I missed a week, but I didn't. I made, made it just time. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Turgut45. Uh, we don't have Madison with us this week. Apparently, um, timing is, is an issue for him, so um, we got rid of him. And we got <laughs> a new friend with us today. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Ahmed Bider. Um Second time on the pod. But I was on back when it was first starting. Remember, that was the, day, that was the week Gattuso got hired. Oh, I shit. It was, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, it was just you was. and I, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just me and you because I used to watch the Primavera a lot. So yeah. we talked about what he was like and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And since then, you've become a Palmer fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's just a virtual shirt. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. I like it. I like it. Um, yeah, great to have you back on, mate. And yeah, Maddie's sacked, so that's good. Uh, we're going to have to like edit your face over the logo for the podcast, which is going to be fun. So any graphic designers, um, hit, hit us up, you know? Um, so yeah, where are we? Where are we? Oh yeah, before we get into the episode, just a reminder that we're in the running for the uh, 2020 Football Content Awards um, for the category Best Content Creator International. Um, there's an article on our website if you go onto the features page and that tells you how you can vote for us or... Uh, there's also a tweet that you will very easily find that, that tells you the various ways you can vote because you can tweet your vote by copying a certain thing, uh, comment on an Instagram and also there's like a web thing that you can fill out. Uh, we appreciate everyone who's voted for us so far. Hopefully we can win. We're up, funnily enough, we're up against the Palmer blogging that. Um, they're really, they're really good. I like what those guys do. Um, so yeah, uh, voting closes on June the 18th. So that is eight days for us to rack up as many votes as we can and then the ceremony is not until November because they've had to push it back because of the various, you know, restrictions and social distancing and all that. So it'll be November when we find out. But yeah, every vote counts from now until June the 18th. And as I said, thank you to everybody who's already voted for us. Um, and just to share even could help Milan win a trophy indirectly. So yeah, cheers. Uh, speaking of winning a trophy, uh, Friday, it's almost here. The first game back since like early March. Um, you said, I mean, before we started recording, it feels like it's been two full seasons since we played, uh, yeah. which, which is fairly accurate. Um, we, we kind of talked about it last week. We're not too optimistic, really. Uh, I said we'll take the lead and lose, and I'm now starting to think that, actually, yeah, we're not playing with any recognised striker, so I don't even think we're going to score a goal. But, um, <laughs> I mean, you're here, to, you're here to give us some optimism, aren't you? No, of course not. <laughs> I feel like I feel like no see I feel like it'll play like every single UV game we ever play will be tied or we I actually think we will score we'll score then we'll, they'll tie it up then they'll bring somebody off the bench somebody really good that we can't possibly match and they'll win by some stupid goal somebody will do something incredibly stupid usually a fullback right yeah and then We'll, we'll lose. Well, it's funny because we basically don't have our two starting fullbacks for this game. Um, and not that they were any good anyway. Exactly. <laughs> well, Teo, I wouldn't, wouldn't mind it, Teo. At least he would have given no. us a chance of scoring. Teo's great going forward. Teo's yeah. great going forward. But my God, is he embarrassing defensively, man. Like, he's so bad defensively. He yeah. needs to work on that, definitely. Um, or we just need to, uh, as we keep saying on this pod, we, we need a... Um, uh, a better, a more solid defensive right back who can almost slot over and help us out a bit at the back when Teo goes bombing forward. But uh, I don't know. I think everything will change, obviously, if we get a new manager and stuff. We'll come on to that. But just on this game, um, the lineups have basically been not leaked, but you know what I mean. The, these are the probable lineups according to Sky. Um, so I'll run through ours first and then we can shit ourselves when I read out theirs. Uh, obviously, Donna Rimmer in goal. Conte has brushed off whatever it was that had him apparently out last week, and he'll start right back. Uh, honestly, doesn't make me feel any better about anything. Um, Kier and Romagnoli, centre backs, obviously. Uh, Calabria left back, because that's the way to help him when he's having a terrible season is to shift him to his wrong side. <laughs> Laxalt must be like requesting a, a, his contract rescinded as we speak. Uh, Kessier, oh. Benesser, Bonaventura as three. Uh, sort of 
out and out central midfielders with Benacer being in the in the middle and the deeper. Uh, Paqueta and Chalanoglu then supporting Rebic up front in a Christmas tree that we haven't seen since Carlo Ancelotti's days. Uh, first takes on the lineup. Different. It is different. Um, I mean, obviously, in an ideal world, we would have Teo and, and Zlatan in, but for what we have, it's not terrible. It's just terrible compared to what it's going to be up against. Fair assessment. Yeah. The I don't know, man. The fullbacks are always going to be a problem. They would have been a problem defensively anyway, but now that Calabria, as you said, is having a terrible season, I don't know what the hell has happened to him this year, but and now he has to go on his left. And Conti, the king of making unnecessary fouls that just no one needs to see. Yeah, it's just it's not going to be good, realistically. I could see no. Conti getting a red card. His thing is he doesn't even, like, when I, when I mean, like, stupid, I don't mean, like, aggressive. I mean, like, he does this. If you actually pay attention, to he does it at least twice a game where the winger will be going away from goal, and he'll just mm-hmm. foul him for no reason. Mm-hmm. And just oh, it, those pa- the, fouls well, piss me off more than anything in the world. The penalty that he gave away where his arm was just outstretched for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. Um, when you're just running around like this and yeah, like, backfires. Guy, like, what are you doing, yeah. man? I get it because obviously we're looking now. We, I think a lot of our fans have learned to look economically on how we're dealing with things, and obviously selling Calabria would give us a chance to to get a capital gain and all that. But for me, like, how long are we gonna stick by Conti, man? He came in 2017. Has he had 10 good games since in the last three years since he arrived? Like, we paid decent money for him, and I I just don't see why we're not. Conte was one of those players that when we brought him in, we had really high hopes. I mean, he was fantastic. I believe he was defensive player of the, the season the year prior um, at no, Atlanta before we got yeah, him or just, something like that. He was a wing back. Yeah, yeah, it was strange. <laughs> I, I don't agree with the award, but that's what he was named. And um, everyone was really excited. We thought, okay, yeah. cool, we, we've solved this problem. Like, we're going to be great. And that's what we said with a lot of those um, signings that came in that season. But then he didn't play for – for two seasons because of injury, and then he came yeah, back. He got those two awful injuries, yeah. Yeah, and, and, you know, you can't blame him for that, but you can blame him for how he's been since, and it hasn't been very good. So I, I think he's going to go the same way as um, Caldara went and all the other big-name people that we would buy and then just got injured for seasons. It seems like that's been a trend for us lately. But, yeah, Conti's got to go. You know, we just, well, just got to move mean, on. He's like a lot of fullbacks in – a lot of fast fullbacks in that, like, when they have their pace, they can make positional mistakes, and then just by being incredibly fast, they can make up for that. But then he has the two AC injuries. Now he's not fast. So he's not athletic. And he was clearly never a good positional player, positional player in the first place. So now when he gets caught out, there's just no recovery. There's no, no possibility for a recovery. And, like, he's just a disaster. Yeah, he doesn't he offer anything. The sharpest tool in the shed. Let's be real. Like he's just, <laughs> yeah. That is right. It's right. Since the two injuries, like you say, you can't really do anything about that. You can't legislate for that. And um, I do feel feel bad for him in that regard. But like he's twenty seven now. Um, it's, he he needs to have figured it out by now. And unfortunately, we're in a position where we've got a. I feel bad talking about a human being like this, but we've got a dead weight asset that we can't really shift. So we're probably going to have to stick with him um, until his contract's up in 2022 or hope that we can send him somewhere for a more useful player. Like, you know, send him to Fiorentina with a bit of money and get Lirola and see, see if we can do something like that just to try and improve. I mean, we're going for a new starting right back. That's obvious. Um, I'd just much rather see Calabria stay around because he's 22, maybe 23. But yeah, he's 22 and mm-hmm. um, he's got a lot more potential as a backup. Um, and I don't, I don't think he minds being a backup, whereas Conti, you know, was apparently getting itchy feet in January. His agent kept saying stuff about evaluating exits. And um, yeah, just don't really like the situation at right back at the moment. I mean, we've nobody in the Primavera who could step up either, but... Uh, for this particular game, I think it's going to be a disaster, especially when I tell you that, um, as it stands, Juve's front three is going to be Douglas Costa, Paolo Dybala, and Cristiano Ronaldo. Yep, going to be fun. 
Can't wait. We're in trouble. <laughs> but I think I take back what I said. I don't think we're going to score. I think we're going to lose 3 0 or something. Yeah, I mean, it seems like every time Douglas Costa comes on against us, Juve just yeah. they, they the turn it up another level. And it's because he's so fast. And like we've pointed out, all of our fullbacks are pretty poor defensively. I mean, Teo's as quick as him, but he's not playing, so it doesn't make a difference there. Calabria's not fast. Conti's not fast. I mean, no one's going to catch this guy, and he's just going to go right Laxalt through. Laxalt would probably give us the best chance, and he's not being given a game. And that's okay. But best <laughs> chance of him catching up to him, but, like, everything else. What's he going to do then? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, um, like, great, he'll be side by side to get beat by again. Like, oh, <laughs> he's, oh he's man, terrible. it's a bad. It's a real mess. Yeah. Um, this was I mean, not the game I wanted to come back on. <laughs> no, but this is an interesting question I'll ask now. Um, it comes from Tommy Tank. He says, do you think that with this being the first game back in Italian football and there'll be a lack of match sharpness on both sides, it could give us an advantage? No. Could, could there um, be a wild card? Not even a little bit. Yeah, not a chance. No. Do, do you know who Cristiano Ronaldo is? That man stays ready that, that exactly all day That's exactly what I was day. about to say. And not just that. Like I know. Being... Our yeah, players, they don't stay ready even when they have a game like twice a week. You know, they go out and fly to Ibiza and, and party midweek <laughs> games. So, um, yeah, I don't think we're going to be ready at all. I think we're going to come in out of shape, slow, lethargic, ugly, and we're going to get smashed. It and doesn't help like, as well. Go yeah, when you're, out of, when you're out of match fitness and all this kind of stuff, you want – it's the, the, the players who are going to be most ready to bounce on the little taps and the mis- – mistakes and the little deflections stuff like that and they have all the best guys to do that they have the best guy who's probably ever existed to do that and Ronaldo like this guy just if you make a mistake he's always somehow there Mm. and the rest of their squad is great at that and we have just a bunch of guys who are always just we have a young squad youngish squad that is just not as experienced as theirs in getting that kind yeah, it's it's going to be bloody hard. Like, let's let's be totally honest. Um, I, just for the purpose of continuity, the rest of their lineup, they've obviously got Buffon in goal, um, Quadrado at right back, which does give me a little bit of hope. I mean, I know he's been playing well actually as a right back this season, but um, you know, he's, he's faster not, than I, anyone on our squad. He's faster, but whether he's better defensively, given that you know his his best performances as a professional player have come as a right winger. I disagree um, with that. I, I think he's a pretty solid wing back. Just right simply back. because he's of how right fast back. he is. I mean, he's going to get around at anyone, and it doesn't matter if he's poor at defense. If one of our forwards get in front of him, he could just catch up, and then he's going to get in front, and it's then like, we're going to um, run right into him. I mean, it's like a little road runner. Yeah. Because yeah, it's not like any of our players that? are that tricky up top either, you know? Like, our best yeah. – player with tricks of skills at his feet was Suso and he had one skill and he's gone. So it's like, <laughs> what are we gonna do? I have no high hope. The only fully well, enough the, the other guy is Buffon being in goal because he's old and I just I hope he gets corona mid game and you know I wheel him out. <laughs> uh that yeah that's staying in. Um <laughs> yeah maybe I want to see him cry to be honest. That's what yeah, I really oh, that's my favorite thing. But yeah. Um, so yeah, there's that, and then there's uh, delete uh, Benucci. It would be funny to see him cry as well. Alexandro left back. Fair. Uh, the midfield is pretty packed out. They've got Kadira, Bentancur, and Matsuidi. I mean, we just can't hold a light to that. Uh, and then obviously the front three, as I mentioned, so it doesn't match up well. Um, not at all. <laughs> this is like, fun. This is uh, one of them that's either going to be a 5 nil or after the game, we're all like, oh, we only lost 2 nil. I think no, we've done see, quite well there. Actually, I never think it's going to be like that. Against the big teams, we always find a way to make it competitive yeah. and then always dignified loss. Like, we always lose that way. I, I mm. can't even remember them actually, like, destroying us. Even, like, peak Benter era, they used to just be like, oh, it's too – they score early – then there'd be like a long stretch of the game where we'd be like, oh, we might do something. And then they'd score again. It'd be 2-0. And that's but, what yeah. makes it they so much really harder like is because you yeah. go into it with zero expectation, expecting to get dominated. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're like, maybe we could pull this off. Like, we're going to do something oh, we here. Did. I could feel it. And then we don't. And then it'll be like, like in the first league, no one anticipated anything. We're having a god-awful season. We go up and we're, we're 
controlling the game. We're like, all right, wow, we're going to get away with a 1-0 win, 90th minute handball. I'm pretty sure there was some dubious bullshit to it anyways, but I don't remember. And then Ronaldo scores a penalty, and it's 1-1 to end the game. Well, that one was the Calabria it. one when he was like a yard away. And then, of course, there was That's the... That's cool, uh, yeah. Then there was the Chalanoglu handball that gave Dybala the last-minute penalty in 2017. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was it last season? Piontek put us 1-0 up at, at their ground, and we lost 2-1. Uh, again, Moise it was Keen. Moise Keane and Dybala again, I think. Um, yeah. It was just like... Benucci put us up 1-0 on their that. ground as well, and then we lost that game. Yeah. That's we have a habit. We have a habit okay. of doing that. Yeah, We've never won there. Um we we haven't won a Coppa Italia game against Juventus since 1985. Again, the argument is all we need is a draw, but we we need to score, and it's like we we're missing the players that we need to score. It's funny because you were talking about trickery and stuff earlier. Leal probably gives us the best chance of having that X factor, that unknown, that something that that they perhaps can can um, prepare for and. And that's only helpful There's because you right really haven't there. seen him play either. But I don't, I don't think he he gets the chance. Really, I mean, he'll probably get a chance because we have five substitutes. But I don't think he's going to be like the talisman. He's not going to change anything for us. You know, what do I mean, you guys think about him? I like the player. I like him. I just don't. I don't think his time is now. You know, I think he he needs more. He needs something else. And I don't know if I he can get it working with this squad. He's so frustrating. But at the same time, I, re- I genuinely think he's maybe the most, like, naturally gifted player we've maybe had since Pato. Like, I can't think of anyone who's – he's just – he gets the ball and you're like, this guy can do things. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Every time he gets the ball, I feel like he's going to do something. Now, more often than not, he doesn't because he's just a, not the smartest, right? Yeah. But – he, he, but again, that'll come with experience and all that kind of stuff. I'm not talking, I'm not, I don't actually think he's a stupid pl- person. I just think he's not as experienced. Yeah, it's his decision making. Like, it it's the same time. issue that Paqueta yeah. has, you know. He's fantastic when he gets yeah. the ball, fantastic moving up the pitch. And then when he's in the final third, like he just makes the wrong choice nine times out of ten. And the one time he does make it, he scuffs the ball or something and goes to the stands. Yeah, I agree with the assessment as well that Leal is definitely a player that gets you on the edge of your seat. Um, he wants to make things happen and I really like that and that's why I think as well especially given how direct he is and how nimble he is that there might be a role for him under Ranić if he arrives you know he strikes me as a, as a forward who might if he was willing to work hard and he was willing to press and buy into the philosophy there's something there you know in terms of vertical movement just bombing towards the opponent's goal he could be absolutely perfect for this we've seen that goal against Fiorentina mm-hmm. you know, it's weird because he's had like he's got two goals for us hasn't he and he is the player that I think I see the most like Twitter and YouTube compilations of in our entire squad, and he's barely playing. So yeah. there's there's clearly people are seeing something there, and we've seen something there. But I'm worried if if Ibrahimovic is injured, we've we've got to go for our our other centre forward, unless we really don't see him as a centre forward, and and we just refuse to play him there because we're worried about damaging him in a game like this. But it worries me that he he was out injured and he's just not getting a look in. Well, I mean, I, I, yes, I agree with you. But it makes sense given the form Rebic is in. Granted, form's gone. Like, you can't look at any past form this season and think it's going to continue, you know, at the, too long of a break. But Rebic has done well, and it'd be unfair to him to start Liao, I think. Well, well I think you can start. But Rebic has done better on the left. Rebic did better on the left. Sorry? You were cutting out there. You were saying Rebic did what? Can you hear me now? Yes. Mm. Yeah, I was saying Re- Rebic did well, but he did better on the left. Him and Teo was actually like yeah. them part- that partnership was actually one of the best things that happened to us this season. Was mm. them just because there was so much pace on that side, right? Yeah. And then so Rebic actually works hard. So he might, he covers for Teo's like when he goes forward. I think the thing with Leao is like, it, it was part of my frustration with us signing Ibrahimovic. Now, I, again, I'm not like completely against the thing like now. I know he, in hindsight he's good and all that stuff. But my thing was, 
okay, we're going to suck. Once we sign Jim Paolo, like, we're not going to be good, right? We're not making top four. It's just not happening. Once that happens, play lay out every single game, in my opinion. Like, yeah, if we're grow. saying, yeah, if we're, if we're saying he's so talented, he's this and that, and he needs time. And, like, the only, the only reason you wouldn't give young players time is if you're good, but we're not good. So just give him, give him all the time he, he can need. You know what I'm saying? I agree with that. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I also think, I think there's a formation for this game where you can fit them both in quite simply. Yeah. You know, you stick with the 4-2-3-1, the thing that we've been using for weeks and was working so well up until the, uh, mm-hmm. up until the stop. And you sort of have a, a supporting cast behind of, say, um, Let's say you have Rebic on the left, Chalanoglu playing in his more natural position as a number 10, and then Bonaventura or Paqueta on the right, and you have Leao up front. And you stick Benacer and Kessier, and you know, everybody's happy. I mean, I don't see what good it does to put our best winger this season in an unnatural position and to leave out a player who must be getting a bit disillusioned now in terms of the game time that he's getting. But um, we'll see, because... Again, I think there's an element of protection in all of this as well. Um, I think we we see him as this gem who's ready to explode, and we think that by giving him game time in bad situations, then he might get disheartened by that. Uh, but I don't know. I don't want to overthink the psychology of it too much. It's just a surprise to me when there were all the reports when we got back into training saying that Lee Howard returned determined to prove a point and all this kind of stuff. And um, for our only only recognised out and out centre forward to not be starting. Interesting. That's, that's all I'll say. Uh, right, we'll do it. We'll do an official prediction then because we like to do it. Uh, I'll start by saying I think we lose three one on the night, so that would be four two on aggregate. Yeah, I think okay. that's pretty fair. <laughs> uh, I'll probably go with that as well. I'll go. I'll go two one. With their winner coming in like past the seventy fifth minute, I feel like it's always like that. It's always close. That would be heartbreaking as well because it goes straight to penalties. It always is. <laughs> it always is. So yeah, like we'd be close. That's, to that's a good point that it's straight to penalties. Oh yeah, I didn't actually it's know that. It's so annoying because I was reading all the reports that were like, oh, it goes straight to penalties if it's a draw after ninety minutes, and I was thinking they've got rid of away goals. We could just park the bus for ninety minutes and get to the penalties. Wait, they got um, rid of away goals? No, but they didn't. It turns out they didn't. It oh. would have to be a one-one result for it to go straight okay. to penalties. Um, but it wouldn't matter anyway. Even if it did go to away goals, we <laughs> <they'd> lost. Uh, <laughs> so right, where are we now? Um, On to other more topical stuff. Interesting thing came out today, towards the end of the day. So basically, there was a there was an interesting meeting that came, a, a Sky piece that came out saying that Ivan Gazidis hasn't been at the training grounds in three months, basically since early March. Understandable, given that obviously there was the break for COVID and stuff. Um, but in the weeks that the squad have been back training, when Maldini and Masara have been there, he hasn't been there yet. So he decided today, um, on the Wednesday, to to rock up to training. And there was some interesting stuff said. So apparently, uh, he first of all communicated to the squad that the club had accepted the players' proposal to cut their salary by 50% uh, for the month of April because of the coronavirus pause, which is fair. Good, good stuff that because the players put it forward first and then the club accepted it and he was able to bring the good news. So I think that's a, a positive start. Um, and then... Essentially, Gazidis apologised to the Milan players for taking so long to communicate that particular news, and he also apologised for his absence because he hadn't been there since March the 6th. He pledged to be at the training ground more and uh, apparently reiterated that the club's owners are financially solid and that large investments will be made on the stadium, which is a weird thing to tell the squad, but, you know. Uh, And then he also told the entire team that they need to give 200% for the next two months of the season, uh, and finally, on the on the next head coach, he said that a decision hasn't been made and purely has a chance of staying. Now, how many times did he attempt to dig himself out of the hole that he's already in there? I've got about six. Yeah, so it's interesting because, you know, in, in order of what you just said, I'm good with him, you know, accepting the proposal. I'm good with him saying, sorry, I haven't been around. Um, I'm good with him saying, but I, I will be more. I'm good with him saying we're going to improve the stadium. And that's about it. 
then everything else was just kind of like, ooh, why'd you say that? Ooh, why'd you say that? Um, you never want to say that we haven't decided if we're going to keep the coach around or not, but you got a chance. You know, like, don't say that in front of the coach. I, I would imagine he, Peely was there. I want to know if he – yeah, he was there. I want to know if he explicitly said it, like, Stefano, you've got a chance to stay in, so next two months we need all hands on deck. Because yeah. I would just be like, sorry, what? I'm resigning. Yeah, exactly. Like, I I don't know. I mean, maybe it's different for you guys, but if you tell me that, hey, we're gonna get rid of you, but if you work really hard, we might we might change our mind. Mm-hmm. With might being the operative word, I'm not gonna work hard. I'm just gonna look for a new job. You know, like mm-hmm. because you've already made up your mind. I have to do something extraordinary, and why? Well, yeah, it's not gonna happen. So um, really that's um, weird. I yeah, it that. is weird, and I just want to know how he phrased it. I would love to have been part of that conversation <laughs> to hear how he phrased it. Like, well, you know, I'm the next manager. N- no decisions have been made. That for me would just be like, right. So there is someone else. Then you just shook. Yeah, exactly. So what you're acknowledging is that there's ideas being floated around of mm. a replacement, yeah. mm. and just I don't even think he just needs to say acknowledge it. Say anything. Exactly. Yeah. Like, that was irrelevant. Say, well, unless like one of the players said. His homeboy staying, you know, and then he's like, "We don't know." But he, even then, why? Why do the I players? You, I, you I, know, this statement's going to be made public. You know, everyone here's going to hear it. Just lie. We, we have total faith in Pioli. That's all you got to say. We're good to go. You know, yeah. and then then change it, just like you did with Boban and Maldini. Just lie. <laughs> That's all football CEOs don't do is anything, lie man. about shit like that. So I don't know why you decided to tell the truth about this one. It's it's foolish. It's stupid. Um, but Zlatan got mad apparently. Yeah, I was going to come on to that. Uh, I'll I'll read it as it was because obviously this came from Vito. Uh, shout out Vito Angeli. He got it first before everybody else. Um, it's a fair play to him for that. But yeah, during this meeting, apparently um, they had a bit of a heated uh, discussion um, in which Ibrahimovic criticised uh, Gazidis for being too distant and also criticised how he handled the salary cut dispute, basically saying that he took too long to communicate the decision. Um, yeah, apparently the, the actual confrontation lasted for a few minutes. Uh, part of the squad witnessed everything, so it wasn't in front of the whole group after he gathered them around. I guess there was just a few of them, and he decided to go over and talk to him. Apparently, Ibrahimovic wasn't happy with the sacking of Boban, and since he left, he's noticed that Maldini's become more distant from the squad as well, um, presumably because he knows that his future's up in the air. Um, essentially, all of the reports that maybe suggested that Ibra has a chance to stay in it doesn't look great now. Um, yeah, I think if anything, he's lashing out because he knows that he might get screwed no over in this as well. Exactly. You know, he, he volunteered to come here and help us to work with Boban and Maldini. You know, he, he's getting paid less that than he was in the MLS. He's like, paid four million a year to volunteer, though. Well, it's less than he was making at his last three clubs. I mean... Like yeah. I get it, it's still a lot, but compared to what he could have been making if he were to go yeah. elsewhere, it's not like he didn't have other options, you know? I think Ibrahimovic is just a man who is very, very principled, and he I likes agree. things to be up front. He, he likes there to be transparency, and he doesn't like the way that Gazidis has gone about things. I think he might have lashed out about the salary issue, but really he was using it as a Trojan horse mm-hmm. for saying, you've handled everything badly, like the whole communication of everything. You know, you can't say in front of the entire squad, we know about Ranić, um, all this kind of stuff. But I think he might have just been saying, you need to be accountable for, for bad communication, basically, which he should. I don't know what I don't know what CEOs of other football clubs are like in terms of, do they normally go and watch the teams train or do they just stay in their office? Um, but Gazidis, how many times have we said, just stick to getting us those new sponsorship deals, stick to working on the new stadium plan, um, do you know what? Even make decisions regarding the boardroom of the club and the manager, but leave everything else to the people who know about football. Well, and even then, you look at you just know that another CEO is not going to hide the fact that he's looking at a new manager from your director yeah. of sport, you know, your sporting directors. Why exclude them? There's no reason to go behind Boban's back. Obviously, we know it's because Randy wants a dual, dual role, but that's not something you would keep a secret from your sporting directors, you know, like you need to have them on your side. That's your staff. That those are your team. 
Um, and that's why uh, Zlatan's so upset about it, obviously, is because he backstabbed Boban, he's backstabbing Maldini. Those are Zlatan's friends. You know, I get it. I, I'm mad too. I don't like Gazidis. No one wanted him here, but that's what we got. Oh, well. His, his management is just in line with how we've been. We've we've done things so bad, so poorly. And like, I I'm just praying that when Rag Ranić comes in, or if he does come in, I assume he does. That let let this please be the final like management managerial change. Like we can't keep doing this. This is like four different managements in four years. No no successful club can ever be run like that. Like no. you have to get this one right. And you know what my thing is, is Radnik is not a miracle worker. I don't know much about him, but I can't imagine the guy's going to come in and turn, because this squad is significantly worse, in my opinion, than it was last year or, year, or the year before that. I think there was a, much more, a lot more upside in those squads. Mm-hmm. And we've, having Suso and Piontek and all these guys leave, the squad is way worse. And you, you, I anticipate we're probably going to suck or we're probably at least not going to make Champions League in his, in his first year. And they need to be completely in tune with that. Like, yes, we, even if we don't make Champions League, I don't care if we finish 15th, he's the guy. And that's right? the problem is we've, yeah. like you said, we've restarted and we've just assumed everyone's going to work miracles. You know, yeah. and, unless you're hiring Pep Guardiola, no, they're not going to work miracles. Yeah. It's just not well, going to happen. There, there's no manager in world football that could come in and – you know, people kept saying Spalletti, he's guaranteed serial top four finisher. Um, he's done it and inherited squads that are far better than what we have at the moment. Our squad, yeah. as we've said all season, is probably the most unbalanced we've had this entire decade. And that includes some terrible teams in 2013, 14 and 14, 15. They were yeah. awful. But I look at that 2014, 15 team and think, Do you know what, there was something there. Like there were... The, we actually played some good football at times. Purely, we, we've seen a bit of a resurgence, but um, we've had all this, these discussions as well about whether it's right to rip it up and start again or whether we delay everything by a year and give Purely a chance to, to maybe, maybe just get a bit of a run going next season and do the impossible. But it starts with the basis of the squad, and I think any manager would struggle to, to work with this squad. So the solution then is that it needs blowing up and rebuilding. Like I'd say Purely has had like, the hardest term for any one-year coach and probably I don't know recent memory of all football I mean you think he took over after Jim Paulo had the worst seven game run in the history of sport and then <laughs> like, it was just it was so bad and he came into the purely out hashtag trending worldwide like he had zero support to begin with That's so bad for he had to rebuild a team that was already rebuilt twice that was done incorrectly twice and then he had coronavirus stop him halfway this whole time there's rumors he's being replaced at the end of the season by Allegri, Ranić, Spalletti, you name it. Anyone who take you, a phone call, yeah. Yeah, and then you have uh, your CEO come to the, the ground and say, hey, we don't know if we're going to keep you or not, but, you know, do your best. Like, what do you want I mean, from I know the that guy? He, you know, I feel bad. He knew, around, buddy. he knew the contract he was signing, and that was one until the yeah. end of the season with the conditional extension. Um, his, his work will never be given enough credit when you look back at the stat line of his – uh, managerial time um, and he did inherit a ridiculously difficult situation but I feel bad for the he seems a solid bloke like he seems a really really good professional and God knows how he's managed to keep his mouth shut throughout all of this um, fair play to him for that and it's going to land him a good job I think what he's doing now what he's done the way he's handled himself is probably going to land him a decent project um, I'd say he's be- lucky he was bald before he got the job because if he wasn't he would be <laughs> <laughs> That should be the our new thing. Is like all managers. <laughs> <laughs> you have to already be bald so that we don't really notice how bad the job ages you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Spalletti. Like, Spalletti in. <laughs> as bad as the thing is, as bad as the squad is, and I really do like. My thing is when Gattuso got sacked. Let's like rewind. Look at that squad, right? We were like. Yeah, I swear to God, I was about to say. I thought, I personally thought, two players away. We're like, okay, we got the goalkeeper. We have the marquee center back. Calabria was good. Rodriguez was was good. Kessie, room to grow. All these guys. I was like, man, Bakayoko, especially Bakayoko. I was like, man, we got to re- we're gonna resign him. Everything's gonna be cool. All this kind of stuff. And then 
and we were happy with Suso. Piontek was off of his great season. Oscar, we were like maybe left left winger and a, a midfielder, and we're good to go. Maybe a center back. You look now, I could like half the team needs half the half the starting eleven needs to needs to change. We have a great spine. So right down the middle, we have Benazir is the guy, unless he leaves, of course. God, God forbid. He's going. Then, <laughs> then Benazir, Romagnoli, Donnarumma, great. Then if Leao is, I am hoping Leao is that guy, but we never know. If he is that guy, then that's a great young, young with Romagnoli now, not young anymore. Uh, spine, like that, we can build on. Everything else. I th- I like Kessie. I, I like Teo. Probably new center back, new right back, a new midfielder, two new wingers. Oh, well, we'd be... <laughs> then we'd be good to go. Then we'll be a champion team. Uh, yeah, it's not great. Yeah, if we if if we scrap half the team, we'll be good to go. But I mean that that's the point that's, though. That's know, what we frustrates did, me about do so. We people were, were I, I, I don't Go ahead. We were so close, man. We were so goddamn close. And I don't know what your guys' thoughts on the Piontek and, and Suso uh, selling selling them in the winter, but I just felt people just rode that wave like so easily. Like people were just like, Yeah, yeah, sell them. Yeah, just you know, whatever. I'm like Suso has been good for like four years. He had he has a bad six months under a manager we all agree was terrible, right? And everyone's just like, yes, yeah, some I don't care. I'm like, yeah, uh, he's been our best player. Why? I don't understand why you wouldn't keep him. And and the thing is, with that twenty million, you're not gonna sign somebody who's better than him. You're just not. All we got was Salamankers and uh, the potential of an American left back that didn't even happen. I forgot like, about Salamankers. <laughs> Um, he, I can't, he doesn't exist. He's not a real people. He's not a real person, man. It's gonna be I funny when we sign him permanently. Um, the thing you about can't Suso me is, that guy is real, man. I still agree in hindsight uh, that selling Suso was the right move, and the reason is the interviews that he's given since, where he said that his heart basically wasn't in it anymore, um, and he's co- he's come out since and criticised the uh, the management and the lack of stability, which I totally understand. However, it just proves to me that we were keeping an unhappy player. Mm-hmm. Um, and his and form was suffering as a result. And we, we've got 23 million pure capital gain out of him because we, we got him on a free. So I, I get it. Like, it was probably one of those where he'd reached the end of his six years. He'd been with us for six years. Like, he'd probably just reached the end of his cycle. Um, but you're right. We, we now need to find a replacement. Or if we're going with like a 4 4 2 into next season, please, for the love of God, get someone better than Samu Castillejo. I'm sorry, but I, I just. What, what what are people seeing with this guy? The more that I think about it, the more he's have nothing else, man. People will eat up anything. That's what that's yeah. what this season has taught me. Whatever the hell Milan serve us, there are a bunch of people who will, who will like eat it up. They don't care. They'll mm-hmm. they'll accept anyone at any position. They'll just be like, yeah, Samuel Castillo better than Suso. Oh, I'm like, at what? At what? <laughs> like, I don't understand. Do you know what? I would have rather, wa- dude. My thing is like, I would have rather watch Susu fight through his bad form than ever give Sam with the starting job. I said that. I said it multiple times. I, uh, yeah. I think Samu Castillo had a bright sort of burst back onto the scene. Where, he had a good month. Uh, he, lo- he looked like he, he gave us something different, and different doesn't always equal great. You know, um, we figured that out with American politics. Um, but, but yeah, Castillo, the thing that frustrates me is people like, well, he works hard, he's athletic, uh, and he's fast. And it's like, when was the last time he scored a goal? He's an okay player. Hey, okay is... is the thing is, is, like... Wait. <laughs> no, the thing, with, the thing with him is... Can you guys hear me? Yeah, how yeah, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep for, uh, thinking uh, internet's terrible that's why but what's it called yeah the thing with him is is he's an okay player but I have seen Suso with my own eyes be a Champions League level player I guarantee you <laughs> Samuel Gazzia will never be that at least at Milan he won't I agree and like that's why it, it was the same thing with Piontek 
I agreed with his selling a little bit more than Suso, but I still felt like we all agreed as the collective. Jim Paolo was not a good manager for the job, and he was doing a bad job. And, and once you establish that the system is bad, I don't understand how then you can like start blaming all. So you say the system is bad and the manager change is bad, but the dips in form are somehow the players' fault more than the manager. I don't get that. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I, I campaigned for um, Piontek's sale at the, at the time because I thought he was another one. His head just, his head seemed to drop. And that was the difficult thing is that he appeared to stop working hard for me. But I, I get what you mean. It's difficult when, um, you know, players are playing under various changes in system and um, Paqueta's one as well, I think. Well, he's not exactly had the right conditions to flourish, has he? He's worked under, what, three managers already in the uh, in the 18 months that he's been here. Um, but the, the Piontek thing, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't think we'd have let go of him unless Hertha Berlin had have come in with that offer, you know, of straight up cash uh, to sign him on a permanent deal. And I think we just panicked and thought, right, we've got a chance yeah. of getting Ibrahim. Well, obviously Ibrahimovic was... Um, was basically back at the yeah. club then already. Um, so we just mm-hmm. panicked and were like, right, well, let's... He, he hadn't been good. I'll be totally honest, Piontek had not been good. Oh, he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't. Uh, but I agree, yeah, punishing the players 100% for, for what have been systematic failures in terms of choices of management and stuff like that. And we're going to regret losing Gattuso because have you noticed that Napoli are now above us in the table? Yeah. Um, he's very good at... at he just renewed with Napoli, Napoli as well. Time. Yeah. Uh, I said that at the the time it, people can't even claim hindsight like i said that at the time the guy finished one point away one bruno alves free kick hits the post instead of goes in right mm-hmm. and we're in the champions league and we're like no 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 no. we need to scrap everything we fired the we have fired the man we sacked the manager first of all right but not only did we do that we signed a manager who didn't who had a completely different philosophy like under gattuso it was I think we lost him. Defense first. We can. Oh, God. Yeah, Sorry, Scott. Oh, you got that part. Yeah, you're fine. I'm sorry. All right. I was saying, like, under Gattuso, it was defense first. We build from there. And then we, we, we bring a completely, totally different manager who wants to, like, play tic tac possession football with, with players who clearly aren't good enough to do it. Right? And then. So not only did we just sack the manager, we scrapped the whole thing. We scrapped the whole system he had. Mm-hmm. And when we were all saying we're one or two players away, we don't. We not only don't sign those one or two players. We signed players from positions we thought we were good in. And I'm like, how does this correlate? Like I don't understand what was going on. Like okay, I don't. Th- I again, the Teo signing in hindsight, good, right? But at the time, did anyone think, man, an urgent need? Yeah, I had a left winger and midfielder. We need a left back. That's what we really. Need. Yeah, I didn't think that. Yeah, I and did. Like, and then we signed a thirty-five million Portuguese youth striker. Like, oh man, as if we haven't been that down that road again, uh, that road before. And like, it just—that's the part that pisses me off. It's like, how many times do we have to keep making these same mistakes? Like, did Ender Silva not exist? We saw, he was still at the club as we signed Rafael Leao, <laughs> and and then we were like, oh. We gotta get rid of this guy. We gotta get rid of this guy. Oh, Eintracht Frankfurt won a two-year loan deal swap. All right, let's do that. It was just, it, it was just like a bundle of nothing. It was just like, what, what, what did we just do? We were one or two players away, and not only did we not address any of those positions, we got completely different positions and changed the formation and the tactics and everything. And then, yeah, seven games later, we did it all over again. <laughs> And then we had to work towards getting back to where we were with Gattuso. We took <laughs> totally good. 20 steps backwards just to take five forward, you know, and now we're, we're, we're so far away. I mean, it's, there was some context as well to the summer of recruitment. It was clear that we uh, wanted to go in a new direction by signing young players that we could develop and basically make our accounts up better. I totally understand that. But we said at the time, over and over again, if we're putting our eggs in that basket, then stick with it. Like, just stick with it. Don't, mm-hmm. in January, when we're in exactly. eighth place, when we're in eighth place, sign three 30-plus-year-old players. And what did we do yeah. exactly that? <laughs> it's like, we all did. right, yeah. That's the, that's the... <laughs> uh, 
Poor internet. For those of you that aren't watching, he's ranting, but no one can hear it right now. He's frozen on screen. He's quite funny. Uh, though, part. Oh, no, like, do they? What teams are they? No, no one can hear it. God damn, man. <laughs> <laughs> this is already my favorite episode. <clears throat> uh, oh, oh, we lost oh, well. him. There we go. Oh, and he's, he's back. back. God, man, this this internet man is. Ass. Is that when you rant? It overloads everything. I know, <laughs> man. Go. It takes me out. It cuts me out at exactly the moment I need the connection. But no, it's like, what the hell was I saying? <laughs> no, this I've never heard. Really, this is already my favorite episode. Hold on, oh, hold on. Uh, yeah, it's like, what are these teams they're watching that they just are like, all right, so we're going to go with the youth project, which, oh, we done we did that before. Ital Milan or whatever the fuck that was called. Oh, right? God. God, that, that was yeah. so <laughs> Right? <laughs> we, as if we haven't done that before. We're going to re- we're gonna bring back the shit from the past, and then we're going to go, we're going to fill the whole, squ- whole squad up with 20-year-olds, and then we're not even going to be paid. Because as we all know, squads with 20-year-olds Is it doing it for you? Yeah, I feel bad for the people that are going to be listening instead of watching them. <laughs> Gotta have no clue. Yeah, no. They'll just be able to hear some kind of like alien it noise. Can't be like, the like, I just don't know what the- <laughs> You guys can hear me? <laughs> it's so funny because every time like you'll you'll be frozen we'll just start speaking over you and then <laughs> as soon as you hear that you cut back in every time <laughs> mm, it's quite funny ask you if we can hear you it's like we can now <laughs> uh, i'm uh, saying like they just got they're just doing this stuff where it doesn't make any sense like not only they they sign all these 20 year olds and they don't want to allow them to develop and then they want immediate success and they hire Raniak for his uh, ability to manage youth and to sign uh, successful youth players and I'm like yeah but R- Leipzig sucked to begin with that's the point we need to focus on they sucked to begin with and only when they allowed years of development did they finally become a Champions League team or a consistent Champions League team he also right? signed a load of players on the cheap. People don't realize how many play- He might have exactly. signed 20 players and five of them were of first team quality, but it didn't matter because... That's Red the money. Were- yeah, that's... Yeah. And Red Bull um, were obviously more than able to financially back something yeah. like that. And because he was signing yeah. players so cheap and so young, their value didn't really decrease. So he didn't look exactly. bad for the balance books. But with us, uh, it feels like... We're going, we, we are shopping at a slightly more expensive store than I think uh, Rennick was to begin with, definitely, uh, at Leipzig. But we need to get it right, you know. If Florentino Luiz comes in, for example, and we pin our hopes on a guy who can't get a game for Benfica over <laughs> Julian Beagle, um, and we stick him alongside Benacer, who has had his own inconsistencies, but he's now apparently the leader of our midfield, even though he's got 12... <laughs> 12 yellow cards in 14 starts or something. Um, we should probably be a little bit worried. Uh, and then, you know, should, there are players like Shabozhlai and uh, Luka Jovic, if he were to arrive and stuff, that would give you a... Uh, Bakayoko, if he were to come back, would give you a bit of certainty, an element oh, God, of, like, geez. we know what we're getting with this guy. Uh, but it's the key positions that we need. We need another... Uh, we need another good central midfielder that we can just say, uh, give him the games. Same with centre-back, same with right-back, same with striker. Those are like four big, big needs. And I know we have the budget to do it, but um, we've got to get it right. I trust Ranić. I really do. Uh, I think he's going to get the power that he wants. Um, but our fan base are not exactly known for being patient and rational. Um, and, and we'll need to see a fairly quick... Yeah. I mean, his executive record, like, who are we to, like, disagree with that? The guy did build a great team with Leipzig, right? Three. But, yeah, exactly. Built Schalke and Hoffenheim before that as well, which shouldn't be ignored. G- great. That's why. <laughs> but uh, what's it called? No, but I'm saying, like, he's – it's just – I don't understand. We need to be wary about the fact that very likely we will not make the Champions League next year. It's just unrealistic because of – 
and and people would be like, oh well, Conte did it. Well, yeah, if you sign, if you give Raniak. 150 million and you let him sign an 80 million striker then yeah we will be good we might be good to go but at the at the the level we're shopping at and especially if we're going to stick to this 20 year old thing or whatever these young players right we're definitely not making champions league next year and all these people uh, uh, that's my main thing the management and the fans which as funny as it is they're about as fickle as each other right <laughs> is that's they, good. that's getting clipped I'm saying, but all these people that are, are so dead on with Renyik, and I'm fine with them. I, 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 let's, let's do it. But all these people that are so excited now, they better be, they better, they better be ready because we are not going to be good. Likely we are not going to be good. And when it happens, don't switch your tune because this is what happens every time. When we sacked mm-hmm. Gattuso and we hired Gianpaolo, everyone was like, oh, man, we finally got – yeah, Gattuso needs to go and all this stuff. And it's the people – No, I'm saying. And it's <laughs> – Dude, and it's the people, it's the people like, I'm going to pat myself on the back here. It's the people like me who end up, end up defending the manager every single time, right? And so that we, we fire it too, so we hire Jim Powell. I'm like, man, we're going to suck. It's just how it goes. We're going to suck. And they're like, no, you don't even know what's going on. He's going to play amazing football with the 4 3 one, two. that hasn't been good since like the 1980s, right? All this kind of stuff. And then they go... And then when he ev- inevitably sucks, obviously he sucks. Then we're f- I'm, I'm s- sitting there like, I think we should still keep him. I think we should just give him time. And everyone's like, no, no, fire him. We fire him. Yeah. Now we're going to do the same thing with Ribbit, with uh, Raniak. They're all, get- they're all already so excited that we're going to automatically compete with Juve with the title, obviously. Because he built Leipzig, you know, right? It's not like he had the job for 15 years before he- they were any good. This is like- Leipzig as well. <laughs> we haven't got- won a major trophy yet. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's like, God, man, they're going to be so excited now until we inevitably lose a couple of games. And then they're going to be like, man, what is this guy? This guy stinks. And what, they're I hope, want to... what I hope from this, though, is that uh, if there are growing pains, which I think there will be definitely, is what happens with having a predominantly young squad at learning a, a completely new philosophy and idea of playing in a shorter preseason than normal. What I do hope is that we see enough signs for people to be like, okay, he's building something. So we might be losing games, but we're losing them 4 too. Like we're playing attractive, we're, we're playing intense. We, we appear to be moving in the right direction. Whereas the thing with Gianpaolo was definitely the fact that he, he, he uh, scrapped the 4 3 one, two after like three games. People were like, ah, this guy doesn't actually have a plan at all here. Uh, well, he had and then, a plan. He just couldn't execute it. That's like his thing. His whole thing was... Like, the Sampdoria squad was so tailor-made for what he wanted to do. It was do, a good squad. Right? It well, was, when Jampaolo came so, in, he requested one player, Trera, and we didn't get him, you know? And we didn't get him. No, but because every time, one, every time a manager requests a player, we never get him. And we that's never, like what they sign him. on. It's like, oh, yeah, I'll come yeah. to – I'll coach Milan, but this is my demand is we get at least – one of these three players or whatever went, got you. Terrera was Never there happened. for the taking as well. Like, he'd been there he a year wanted and it. said he, he wanted begged. to come home. He begged. We wouldn't, we wouldn't pay or we wouldn't even try it, which was weird. I mean, I, I still wouldn't take Terrera now. I think he's too similar to Venice Air. But, um, yeah, that was a funny one. Anyway, yeah. moving on. Let's uh, – I'll do a quick uh, rumor. What did we call it? Shit or what? Uh, sound, sound or, or shit. shit. Yeah. <laughs> right, so – Slightly different. So, three different positions that we're apparently targeting. Uh, just want you to name a name and why. Banner says, partner, do you want Bakayoko, Florentino Louise, or Mark Rocker? Who's the last one? Mark Rocker. Rocker? Rocker? I don't know. Is he the Espanol one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is. I mean, I'll start by saying that I watched a lot of his clips earlier. I know it's YouTube and I know it's highlights, but he looks like... There's something there. Like, he reminds me that the most of them, uh, like Sandra Tonali, a uh, good sort of deep-lying playmaker. Not sure that he's a, as combative, but um, he looks decent. I mean, I guess there's a reason Real Madrid um, are after him. You know, d- there's a player in there, and he's uh, won the whatever. What is the, the, uh, the like, price tag for him, for estimated at least? 
when it's 30 mil. He's got okay. a 40 mil release clause, but Espanyol are about to get relegated. So I actually yeah. went to see uh, Espanyol earlier in the year. I remember that. I went to Barcelona. Um, I don't remember picking out anyone from them who looked good. I just remember thinking Sal Niguez is ridiculously overrated. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we're looking at Roca for 40 mil release cost. Potentially we could get him for 30. Um, Bakayoko, 35 mil when we had an option for him at 35 mil like last year. Um, Florentino Luis, who had like, what was it, like a 50 million release cost? I mean, 120 is release cost. 120, but we were looking to buy for 50. Um, yeah. And then Sandro Tonali, a lifelong Milan fan who knows the league would be perfect for the team, has begged to join for three consecutive years, is joining Inter for and less than going to Inter. <laughs> yeah. Now, there's one thing in this that I think I missed out when I tweeted out of rage when I saw the Di Marzio thing. <laughs> um, I don't blame Tonali for saying I want to go to Inter because obviously there's Barella yeah, and Sandro there uh, who he'll be able to form sort of an Italian core midfield with. I get that. There is, there is national team teammates. They're in uh, the Conte Champions will... League. That's what matters. Yeah. Wages too. Team. They'll be able to offer more wages, um, and and yeah, I I don't know. I mean, we might not have heard the end of it by by the sounds of it. Inter aren't exactly particularly willing to throw the you know this despite having an agreement with the player, they they haven't yet closed anything. So who knows? But I, it's if he goes there, I'll be a bit gutted. I don't think Honestly, he's. I'm I, not too crazy about them. Yeah, I I'm don't think he's he's the world beating generational talent that that people make out. Um, but I do I think, think he's the a, best of the four names just mentioned and clearly the cheapest as well. I, I, I'd rather for next season to I'd give us the stability, I'd go with Bakayoko. But I mean, that's who I'm picking I, out of the, the three that were my choice. And by the, yeah, and by the way, when you were talking about um, how Torreira and the, he's too similar to Ben Nasser, I can see why people say that because the way we've employed Ben Nasser is, is has been more defensive. But having watched him a lot for Algeria, I really think... Box to box. I said this actually at the beginning of the season. Yeah, I, I really would like to see him on the left side where Bonaventura and sometimes Hakan usually play. I would like to see him in that spot because when, that's how uh, Algeria used him. They had Adeline Gidiura, the well, Nottingham oh, yeah. midfielder, but they just oh, yeah. had him... Yeah, they just had him just kick the shit out of people and, like, do all the defensive work. And then whenever they got the ball, they just gave it to Benassar and was like, just do something. Dribble past somebody and, and like, start – because his passing is great. He's a very nice passer and he's, he's good in his first dribble and all that kind of stuff. I really – I think if you had Bakayoko, it wouldn't really, like, negate any of his – it would pro- actually, like, reduce his defensive responsibilities yeah. and just let him – Go forward. I think that would be the best option. And that would be ideal because we saw what Bakayoko can do in defense. And we saw the partnership he built with Kessie already, you know. Kessie Mm -hmm. has not been good this season. Give him that guy to, to, you know, be his his buddy in the midfield again. And Kessie's ability goes up. Everything you just said about Benacer, throw him on the left. Now, not only is Benacer doing all that cool stuff, but we don't see Hakan. We don't see Bonaventura. And those are two big pluses. (laughs) Hakan Hakan is starting. For, ne- for into next season, you know, if Ronnie Carrasco, he'll start in goal stay. if the options there. I mean, he will <laughs> just start. Like I don't, he'll take over. He's gonna be I, Julie's successor. Player, I think can be good. I still, I am one of the few people on me on Twitter that doesn't hate Hakan. I, I, he, he, he I started the season out terribly. He started the season out terribly. But I really think, I, I think Ragnik, Ragnik will really like him. It's yeah, odd, I do. Odd, and seems to. I really think he'll like him. It can fit into that, you know, with the four, four two, or four two two two. Those two wide midfielder slots. He'd kind of be perfect there because he can drift into into space and hurt teams when he plays more centrally. But also, he does work hard. You know, we've seen him in the yeah. press when he plays as a trequartista. He does work hard, and I'll give him that. Uh, I also think same reason. Paqueta could work well on the other side. You know, um, well, yeah, we'll see on that one. Um, the other one I was going to say is Jovic or Milik, but like Jovic. I know you're yeah. about Milik, but I'm a Jovic boy. I don't mind Milik, but I think the Dillor and Tice has been a bell end about it. Like, always is. You know, it, yeah, he's notoriously hard to deal with. Are they um, permanent rumors? Yeah, permanent? would be because Napoli need to sell him because his deal runs out in 2021, so he'd obviously leave on a free next summer, and he's not renewing. Um, the only chance is if we just say here's a swap for Kessier, but I just know what would happen. Kessier would go to no, good, no, no. go to Napoli and flourish under Gattuso. He'd be so good. 
He'd be so mm-hmm. good. Gattuso knows exactly how to use him. More defensively, don't ask him to do all this kind of stuff around the box. Just let him do his defensive work. Kessie is, gr- is great at that. Mm-hmm. When he's just doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then the centre-back, I mean, there's just not even one solid name at the moment. Thiago <laughs> Silva, I just don't see it happening. That would go against literally <laughs> everything that we're trying to build. I don't yeah. get that rumour. I just don't. I, I just it don't it won't go it. away. It's been around since like 2015. It just well, we sold away. we sold him, and then the next day that rumor came out. Yeah, mm. <laughs> it's and it's been there forever. Yeah, then too yeah. it was a reunion. That was the whole thing is it was pitched on a reunion of the two t- two players that won the Scudetto, and uh, now Zlatan's going. I just don't see it. it would go against literally. It doesn't make any sense. We're, to if if we're bringing sense. back Scudetto players, I want Seedorf back in midfield. I still I I think he can still give us a solid sixty minutes. Who <laughs> probably what do you think? Seedorf. That's oh yeah. Shit. Well, Sador yeah. was we forced him to retire to take over for us and <laughs> sacked him I, half a season. I, I, his, his, I stand by that because he's another manager who should have been given more time because we played yes. some really good football with him yes. that season. In the fall he season saved that one. season. We were on a sinking ship. Granted, I would take Allegri yeah. over him like today, but at the time, yeah. I wanted Allegri's head. We we, we should have saved us. You know, he was he was right there. I mean, obviously Gattuso was closer, but like Sador had a lot more to work. Against have you has anyone ever looked at the the game we lost against the fourth uh, for the fourth three I think Fall three. What, the, the game Allegri has anyone yeah. ever looked at that lineup again? Uh, I watched I, it back once and it was a super foggy game and I remember thinking why am I watching this again I can't no see no it. I'm talking I just looked at I just one time out of curiosity just looked at the lineup and was just like I cannot believe at the time I wanted Allegri to do something good with this team. Mm, right? Yeah, that was bad. Was, I think that was our I, worst I, team. Yeah, that was oh the worst God. eleven that we have put out on the field. And, that and included, it was Abiati. We had Mexis. Did Bonera start? Um, Bonera. Who were our fullbacks? I can't even remember. It was oh, Eman, it, Eman Wilson was Eman playing. Wilson. All these guys, like, yeah. just, I'm, I, I'm, I would literally looked at the thing and I was like, I cannot believe we seriously, as a collective, wanted this guy. To not be terrible with this team. Oh, we, we screwed like, him up. You can so give that team to whoever you want. Yeah, you can give that team to whoever you want. Club, Pep, whatever. That team is not winning a game. I don't care no, what, um, what we, you we put in. We paid for it with Allegri as well. Next. I mean, I get it. Bell's going to, uh, was starting to run out of money, so he sold. Like, he basically had to sell, and unfortunately, we bit the bullet for that. And we kind of threw Allegri under the bus as a result. Um, anyway, one question, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Um, Nurezis Octavio Wan. Uh, this is a decent question, in my opinion. Um, basically, you can have one input for the new stadium. Uh, like, I don't even know how to phrase this question. It's an interesting one. S- start with which of the two designs do you prefer? Uh, I, pre- I like the cathedral. Was that the name of the one? Yeah. It had yeah, like all yeah. the slits everywhere. I thought that one was really <laughs> cool looking. I was going to say it's both. I haven't seen either of them. So. <laughs> oh right, well that's sorry. <laughs> one of them, one of them's a big bowl, and one of them's like a like a shoebox kind of shit. Um, the bowl, then it's always the bowl. I um, hate the shoebox one. The the box ones, I hate those. Okay, fair. Uh, stadium name. If if the stadium naming rights were to be sold, what kind of company would you want? This is a difficult question. <laughs> My instant thought was something like Fly Emirates. Yeah, so that was my first. They've got too. the Emirates Stadium, but it's I'm gonna go be- for uh, one that makes zero sense at all. But Nando's, Nando's Stadium, that's yeah. quite sick. Elliot Hedge Fund Arena. It does kind of look <laughs> like. Yeah. I'm I'm trying to think about it. Like we're sharing with Inter, so it's got to be something that kind of applies to both of us. Um, trophyless Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> we're not winning anything anytime soon, Stadium. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that will so, fit around the ball. Um, I have the starting lineup for that game. <laughs> Abiati, yeah, De Chilio, Emmanuel Sin, De Jong, Zapata, Bonera, Nocherino, Cristante, Balotelli, <laughs> De Souza. Oh, I th- is that? I don't. It says number seven, De Souza. Who was that? Was that Torres? That's Robinho. Yeah, Robinho. Robinho, and then and Kaká, <laughs> but he was not. What the, the hell did we want from the squad, man? Like I, I'm serious. I look back in hindsight. I'm like, I can't believe we used to like shit well, on managers. 
Wait till you hear the substitutions that came on. Pazzini, Montalivo, and Honda. Never, never disrespect Honda oh, or Pazzini God. for a start. Pazzini, okay, yeah, cool. cool. He came on. So Pazzini oh. was good. Yeah. Who are other name options? Name the other like people. Matri, you know? Like, it wasn't any better. <laughs> uh. I still think the funniest moment in the entire banter era of Milan is when um, we had Mattia Destro on loan from Roma until the end of the season. And in that last game of the season against Roma, when he had to go back, he scored and celebrated. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, mate, that's your team for next season. You shouldn't be celebrating. No, my, my favourite one, I think, the end, was it? The in, end, no, it was right. uh, in the Parma game. <laughs> Deshilio's back pass to Diego Lopez. He gets injured. Own goal. <laughs> No, that was one shit. of the funniest. I don't know why this is. I have two. First, the Cherchi non pass. Oh my god. Oh, yeah, oh, that was my, funny. Dude, that one. <laughs> I just remember the commentator just borderline cursing at him. <laughs> right? And then, the, for some reason, I don't know why this one sticks with me. But when we played Madrid in that friendly. And we won like 5 2. Break, we won 5 1, right? Yeah. So the funniest part is, Matri came on. Right at the death, and then just walked onto the pitch, and then the referee blew the woods up in the end. And I just remember the camera was on him the whole time, and he was just la- he just burst out laughing, just going like, you know, <laughs> he just walked out. I don't know why that one sticks with Honestly, me. I, I am in, I'm determined to go back in preseason and do like a roundup of the funniest moments from our International Champions Cup and like other preseason <laughs> tournaments because we've had some funny ones, like, yeah. Gattuso and, we, and Mourinho we, saying, you guys want to take that it? That thing where um, in the 17-18 in the preseason when we like hammered Bayern Munich, we put a proper put them to the sword. We and beat him like 4-0 or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? And that we, that we got, was when Montella had the job. And we had spent all that money and Bonaventura nutmegged Hummels. And we were like, this is it. We are winning. The and it was like... We were tuning up and we were playing really well. And then Cotroni came on and scored twice. And we were like, who's this guy? <laughs> was that Donnarumma's was debut assisting? also or something like that? Or, no, no. Oh, no, no Donnarumma had already been the starter before by then. Yeah, Donnarumma has been the starter since Mihailovic. That's oh, yeah, a, right. I was he came into about, that preseason for, for PKs. And yep. I was like, why are we doing this? He's a kid. Mm. A little bit we yep. know then. Yeah. Dude, I, I remember. I remember. I was, I was thinking the other day. How many managers has Romagnoli has Romagnoli played through? So oh. we signed him with Mihailovic, then then Brocky, and then I, I'm not even gonna. This is too long. Man. Yeah, but uh, I'm saying sense. like I was just thinking like how how good does it be competent after all this? Yeah, all those managers and, and the guy at, like, is so Madrid, I can't believe under consistent manager or uh, like a, with Pep Guardiola or something, he would be the best defender in the world right now. Like. Guaranteed. The funny thing about all this is the only... Go on. No, go ahead. The the funny thing about this is, like, we've only stayed on a level in and around the Europa League because Roma and Lazio and all these other teams have a tendency to do the same thing and just blow it up whenever they have something good going. Like, Roma (laughs) are worse than us for doing that, but at least they make a profit. Yeah. Um, But, yeah. (sighs) All right, let's let's wrap it up. I'm just going to turn red laughing. Mm. Uh, um, yeah funny. thank you for listening everybody reminder vote on the uh, football content awards thing the info was at the start um, so go and do that now and uh, yeah I've been your host Ollie Fish you can find me on Twitter at Ollie Fisher or at Kilpin Chronicle for some more explicit Milan based rants being joined by Anthony Tolgrew yeah that was a lot of fun uh, really good episode uh, I'm enjoying myself I'm on Twitter at Tolgrew45 uh, yeah it was a fun episode with a lot of internet difficulties and uh <laughs> You can find um you can find me at uh, at Bidir Ahmed, my first last and first name. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Thank you very much for joining us, mate. We'll have to get you on more often because frankly, it makes me feel calm. <laughs> <laughs> See you go off. Um, yeah. So yeah, thanks for joining us, and thank you if you made it this far. Um, and we will catch you in a week's time when hopefully we are in the cup final. <laughs> Perché non tiriamo? Ma perché non tiriamo? Gol! Alessio Romagnoli, gol! Alessio Romagnoli!